So here we're just doing a basic styling of a class and we're using that class name in this div and that's rendering our raw CSS example there. So to do this in Glamorous, we'll add a Glamorous example. And for us, we're gonna say glamorous.div. And we're actually just gonna, I'm gonna copy this right into here. And we'll change this to be a quoted string. And we get the exact same result. To do pseudo classes, you do something similar. We'll just copy and paste this here. So what we're gonna do is I'll cut this out. We'll make a new object and we'll have a key in this object with hover. And then the property for that key is going to be the CSS we want applied when the hover state is active. And so if we hover over that, it uh, works exactly the same. And ultimately this is using actual real CSS that is generating at runtime rather than doing some sort of JavaScript hack to make this, uh, this work, it's actual CSS. Cool, so let's go ahead and talk about applying multiple styles to an element. So in this case, we have a class name that is taking two styles from uh, this CSS. I'll just paste this in here. We'll get rid of this uh, styling here. And with Glamorous, you can pass as many arguments as you want here, and then they will be merged together. So we can uh, create two objects here, one for each uh, group of styles. And so for our first, it's gonna be color orange, and font size is 10. And then for the second one, that's gonna be color is blue and background color is gonna be light gray. And with that, we get the exact same rendering here. So there's going to be one slight difference here and that is what we can do with Glamorous is I can swap the order of these. And with Glamorous, uh, the way that things are merging is the first one has less priority than the second one and so on and so forth. It works similar to object assign except it's doing a deep merge for us. And what's cool about this is I can very explicitly say what order I want these to uh, take precedence in, uh, which I can't really do with class names. So if I swap those, I'm actually not going to get that same experience. And so you have to do a couple of extra things to worry about specificity. Whereas with Glamorous and Glamour, you don't really need to worry about uh, specificity. It just kind of works the way that you would expect it to. So we'll just move that back there so they're the same. And now let's talk about child selectors. So sometimes you do need to have some sort of like, when the parent is hovered, then I wanna apply these styles to this thing. And so how do we do this with Glamorous? So let's go ahead and we'll copy this over and I'll just make that a Glamorous example. And in this case, um, I need to apply some CSS to this div, um, and that CSS is going to be this. And so I could create a, a Glamorous div and then render that gl Glamorous div, um, but instead what I'm going to do is uh, swap out this div for a Glamorous div, and I'm importing that here from Glamorous. With the Glamorous div imported, we can render a capital div, that's our Glamorous div. And then with all Glamorous components, you can use a CSS prop. And this takes an object or an array or a function and allows us to do the same thing we would do as if we said Glamorous.div. It accepts the same thing that we put inside of a Glamorous component factory. So with this uh, CSS prop, now we can start styling things. So I'll get rid of this and I'm going to say my display is block. And now we need to do something about styling these uh, subcomponents. Let's say we don't want to change the class names. Maybe they're coming from a third party or something. So we can take those styles and actually use it inside of our div and reference those child um, class names as child selectors. And so the way that we reference the class name that's going to be generated by this div is by using the ampersand sign. So now we can say dot ex4-0. From there we can say the font weight is bold. And then we'll do the same thing with an ampersand and ex4-1. And that's gonna have a color of blue. And then this is a, a little bit of a special case. So we'll say and colon hover and then e x4-2 and in that case we're going to have the color red so we'll say color of red 
and now we have exactly the same functionality that we had before. Normally you want to avoid doing this kind of thing where we're referencing class names because it kind of breaks out of the encapsulation that you get out of CSS and JS. But occasionally it's really useful, especially with the hover state that we have in this example. So in this case, we want to style this item based off of a parent um, selector. So if the parent has the class Node.js, then we're going to give it the color of gray. And if it, it doesn't have that class, then it's not going to get that color. So let's go ahead and just copy this. And I'm going to make this a glamorous example. And I'm going to use the built-in glamorous component and the CSS prop that takes an object. So as we learned in the previous one here, where the ampersand references the class name that Glamour is going to generate for us, that works exactly the same way. So we're going to say .node-js and then ampersand, and that says uh, insert the class name you generate here. And then I'll give it an object for color of gray. And with that, I'm getting the exact same experience. And if I remove the uh, that Node.js class name from the root div, then I uh, don't have those styles applied. And again, this is all just regular CSS being generated for us by Glamour. Next, let's talk about media queries. So I'm going to go ahead and we'll say Glamorous example dot push uh, Glamorous div. And in this case, we want to have the color be this red color. And then we're going to use the media query as the key for a property in our object and provide the uh, CSS that we want to have applied in that scenario. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy this really quick. And we'll change this to camel case. We'll put that inside of a string as well as this. And we're going to get that same experience. One thing that I really like about this is that it actually allows us to extract our queries to objects like we're doing here. And then we can use this object literal um, syntax here where we can reference the queries.phone. And then we can share those media queries throughout our application. And all of that is really explicit. So let's go ahead and talk about fallbacks. So here we have this display block. And if flex is available, we'll display it as flex. And in my case, I am using a browser that supports Flexbox, and so that's working for me. So let's go ahead and do this using Glamorous. So we'll add this to our Glamorous examples. And instead of a regular div, I'm going to use the Glamorous div that I'm importing up at the top here. And instead of a class name, I'm going to reference the CSS prop. We're styling the display property, so we'll say display flex as kind of our default uh, situation here. And so I'm going to turn this into an array. And we'll say, hey, we want it to display as block. Uh, but if flex is available, let's have it display as flex. We can see this working if I switch this uh, to fallback to block. Then that's going to fall back to block for us. But we want the fallback to be flex. So we'll leave it at that. 